Hey, what's up everyone? It's Ben here from Archive Origins. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the EK Water Block for your MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 4090. No, I can do it. First, we're going to unbox the water block and I'll show you guys what's inside. <laughs> Right out of the box, you have the water block itself. It also comes with some accessories to help you mount the PCB onto your water block. We're gonna get into that in a bit. For the tools you need for this project, we're gonna need a box cutter, or you can also use a scissor. Alcohol wipes, if you don't have it, rubbing alcohol would do the work too. A set of precision screwdrivers. Don't use the big chunky screwdrivers, precision screwdrivers. Okay, let's get into it. Oh, one more thing to notice, uh, EK doesn't provide instruction manual in all of their stuff. So make sure you have it downloaded on your website, pull it on your phone or your tablet somewhere. I have mine here on my iPad. So the first step is we're gonna set all this aside and start disassembling this GPU first. Also be sure to grab some small containers because there's gonna be a lot of screws and you don't wanna lose them. So make sure you keep them nice and organized and we're gonna need that later. So there are a total of 12 screws on the metal back plate. We're gonna take all of this out and after you take out the 12 screws, we're gonna start taking out the four screws on the retention bracket. Once you've got all the screws off, the retention bracket should pop off just like that. And you can set it aside. Now, after you remove all the screws on the metal back plate, you should be able to just take this one out like that. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, the PCB itself actually is just this thing and it's about this size. The rest of this stuff are your coolers. When we slip our water block on, you won't be needing this anymore. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the IO brackets on here. There are five screws on this IO bracket. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna remove all of them and then the IO bracket should pop off. I recommend you film yourself doing that as well because when you forget which screw kind of goes where, you still have your own footage showing you where you put each, each individual screws and you know where to put them back. That should be our last screw and just come off like that. All right, once you have your IO brackets out, you should be able to just pop the PCB off of the cooler. Just be careful because there are some uh, cables right here we're going to have to unplug later. Since on this specific cooler, there are cables on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and unplug this one first, and then we're gonna pop the cooler and then do the other side. So sometimes the PCB can uh, get stuck on the cooler because of the thermal paste and thermal pads, the way they squish onto the cooler. So putting a little bit of pressure is fine, but just don't pull it too hard because you don't want to break the PCB. Now with that off, we're going to unplug these two cables on the PCB. And we're done with the PCB. So this is your 4090. 4K 120 FPS on this thing. Incredible, huh? If you want, you can keep this for a decoration, souvenir, whatever. You can put it back together. Uh, now we're just going to move everything out of sight and then we're going to take our water block and prep it for installation. Here comes the EK water block. It's pretty heavy too, it has some weight to it. First thing we're going to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. We're going to remove all of them so the top plate can come off. This screw won't come all the way off, so just get them loose and this plate should come off. And one more thing with the matte finish on the EK water block, they tend to leave more scratches. So be careful with it, otherwise you leave a lot of scratches on this matte finish metal back plate. We're gonna add new thermal pads and paste onto the PCB. So we're gonna clean this up first. I have my rubbing alcohol wipes here. 
just gently rub everything off. It's okay if there is a little bit of tiny residue left on the chipset, it won't affect the performance. Next, you're gonna grab your orange boxes. These have thermal pads inside. Inside the block, it comes with two types of thermal pads. One says backplate and the other one says water block. So we're gonna need the water block one first and it's gonna go on top over here. If it says backplate, it's gonna go onto the back over here. Now EK labeled their thermal pads sizes with different colors. If you look at your manual, it will be color coded by thickness. As you can see, it's not that actual color in real life. You still kind of have to eyeball it or measure it to find out the actual thickness. Always start with the longest one first because you don't want to cut down to multiple pieces and then doesn't have enough to cover the longer side of the chip. Glue it off, set it on top. Now this one is a little bit bigger than the size of the chip, but it's totally okay if it goes a little bit over as you can see here, there are two rows of chips we're gonna need to cover here, but it seems like we can just cut this big piece in half and that should be able to cover both of these rows. It's okay to go a little bit over because it's gonna be in contact with the water block. So if you don't want to cut it down, it's totally fine too. Next, we're gonna apply the thermal paste. Once your thermal paste is spread out evenly, we're gonna install the water block. You're gonna have to put the water block on top of the PCB because you don't want all the thermal pads dropping onto the water blocks and then have to misplace or stuff like that. Make sure all these screw holes are aligned with the water block. So EK is supposed to provide nine of this M2.5 by four millimeter screws. And we tore all the boxes apart. We, uh, we flipped this table upside down, but we couldn't find any screws. So we ordered replacement and I'll see you guys when we get those in store. We got the screws. We're gonna need seven of these and it's gonna go here, 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 and here. If you can't find your screws or you're like us, EK didn't send us, I'll link this down in the description below so you can get some for yourself. Washer and the screws. Now that all the screws are in place, we're gonna install the IO bracket. And this thing is gonna go on here like that. And for the side over here, you're gonna need a M2.5 by four screws and a nut. Next, we're gonna put more thermal pads, but not on the water block itself. You're gonna need your actual metal back plate and we're gonna cut them into pieces and put it on here. There's like little square boxes to go onto. So let's do that. It comes in two different sizes. This is the one millimeters and this is the two millimeters. We're gonna do the one millimeter first. Now that the thermal pads are ready, we're gonna put our water block back onto the back plate. The instruction says to put the back plate on the other way like that, but I don't want the thermal pads to drop off. So I'm going to do it like this instead. I'm just going to aim it right and put it down. Squeeze it and flip it over. And all that's left to do now is to screw in all of the screws and we're good to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of video, be sure to smash that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.